In Maryland, there are an average of nine fatal and 767 injury bicycle crashes a year. 26% of bicycle crashes occur in Baltimore City. Worcester, Anne Arundel, and Baltimore counties are overrepresented in bicycle crashes. Significantly, more injury crashes occur between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m nearly 41 percent, and 82 percent of fatally injured bicyclists are male. I commute from Maiden Choice to here. It's six miles, about six miles, and it usually takes me 25 minutes. Wilkins Avenue is what I'm on most of the time. Wilkins Avenue is, has a lot of heavy truck traffic, and they're not used to seeing cyclists. If you're going to ride in Baltimore City, I would suggest and I really recommend that you observe all traffic signals. You have to remember that motorists, they read your actions and they make decisions based on what you do. Bueno, lo importante es protegerse la cabeza con el casco porque así si tenemos algún accidente protegemos la cabeza y comunicarnos con señales eh, o hablando, diciendo de cualquier peligro y estar siempre en el lado derecho de la, de la vía, fuera de los, de los carros, de los vehículos. Bicyclists have the same right to use the roads as motorists. However, we also need to be accountable for our actions just as motorists. As responsible adult riders, we need to set a good example, not only for motorists, but for other road users and our children as well. Unfortunately, not all bicyclists set that good example. Some of the more common causes of bicycle crashes are not paying attention to hazards, riding against traffic, riding on sidewalks, not obeying traffic signs or signals, riding at night without lights. To better understand this presentation, we need to begin by assessing the bicycle that you will ride. To start with, there's the all-important comfort factor. The bike should fit you like an article of clothing. With a good bicycle fit, you should be able to stand and straddle the top tube with your feet on the ground. When seated with your foot on the pedal, in its lowest position, your leg should be nearly straight. Of course, there are other factors as well, frame size, frame length, seat height, seat tilt, and handlebar set. The type of riding you do will affect all of these factors. I recommend that you seek the advice of a bike shop specialist. Make sure your bike is in good condition. Brakes that break evenly every time with no slippage. Tires inflated to the pressure stamped on the sidewall. Wheels that rotate freely and smoothly and don't wobble. Handlebar stem bolt and seat bolt tight. Chain snug, clean, and lubricated. We've touched on some of the basics, but there are some other optional accessories you should consider having. A mirror so you can see what's behind you. A lock for security. Lights and reflectors so you can be seen. And a water bottle for obvious reasons. Other options include an odometer, luggage rack, pump, and back fenders. An inexpensive accessory is this LED flashing light, which can easily be seen during daylight hours. Accessories will depend on the type of cycling you're gonna do. Again, consult your bike shop professional. Okay, now your bicycle is all checked out. But how about you? Let's start at the top. The helmet to a bicyclist is like a seat belt to the motorist. The best helmet is a hard shell, and it should have a compliance label showing that it is approved by a recognized organization, like the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. To be effective, a bicycle helmet should have a good fit. It should sit on your head level and cover your forehead. You should not be able to rotate it. You should be able to insert your index finger between your temple and the helmet. A good bicycle shop will check the fit of your helmet as a courtesy. Besides the helmet, you'll need to protect your eyes from bugs and road debris. Sunglasses or wraparound glasses work the best. I can see the countryside. I can see the details of the surrounding community. 
it's refreshing and relaxing. I enjoyed the journey of getting someplace by bike. When you're out there cycling, you need to be seen. Wear highly visible, brightly colored clothing if possible. If you ride in street clothes, wearing a reflective vest over them will increase your visibility. In Maryland, the same rules apply for the bicyclist and the motorist. You must obey all traffic signals, signs, and pavement markings, just as the motorist must. That means stopping for a stop sign or traffic light, yielding the right of way were called for, and riding the right way on a one-way street. In Maryland, bikes are prohibited on all interstate highways, most freeways, or in the travel lane of roads with a posted speed limit of 55 miles per hour or greater. However, there are some exceptions where bicycles are allowed on the shoulder of a road with a posted speed limit of 55 miles per hour. Always ride to the right with the flow of traffic, never against traffic. Remembering, the farther from the curb you ride, the better you will be seen by a motorist. What should you do when the travel lane is too narrow for a motorist to pass you safely? If there are two or more travel lanes in the same direction, ride in the middle of the rightmost through travel lane. If the roadway has only one travel lane in each direction, ride in the center of the travel lane. When a motorist approaches from behind, move to the far right edge of the lane or off the roadway entirely and motion the motorist to pass you. Ride at least three feet away from parked cars and be alert for someone opening their car door. Ride single file when riding with fellow bicyclists in situations where riding parallel would impede other traffic. Statistically, rear-end car bike collisions are rare. Many more crashes occur where streets intersect. Why? Conflicting travel movements occur at intersections, which increase the potential for a collision. Never pass on the right or ride in the blind spot of a car that could be turning right. Be aware of vehicles that could be pulling out of a driveway or a side street. Make eye contact with the motorist if possible. This can give you an indication of the motorist's next move. If they're not looking at you, be alert and prepared to yield or stop if necessary. Just basically assume you are invisible to the motorist and plan in advance what you will do if the motorist does this or that. For reasons of safety and courtesy, you need to communicate your intentions to motorists. This involves using hand signals to signal whether you are slowing down or stopping, changing lanes, or turning left or right. If someone emerges from an area where they don't see you, Use your voice to alert them that you are there. Biker! Biker! And don't forget to signal your appreciation when extended a courtesy by a fellow road user. When you need to turn left on a multi-lane street with no turn lane, look behind you, gauge the speed of traffic, then signal and merge left one lane at a time. Do not change lanes until you are sure the motorist is yielding to you. At the intersection, make the left-hand turn, yielding to oncoming traffic. If there is a left-hand turn lane, gauge the speed of traffic, move over one lane at a time, and go to the middle of the turn lane. Make the turn when you have the turn arrow, or yield to oncoming traffic when the light is green. If you are in a turn lane and there's a vehicle stopped in front of you, wait behind it. Then make your turn, following that vehicle through the intersection. If you cannot get over to the left to make the turn, go straight across the intersection. When you get to the opposite corner, stop. Align yourself in the desired direction. When you have the right of way, proceed with your journey. Always pass as if you were driving a car. Pass where motorists expect you to pass, on the left. Look behind you, signal, move left, and pass. If a car speeds up while you are passing, 
slow down, look back, signal and merge back behind the car. Never pass a stopped bus on the right. You run the risk of being squeezed between the bus and the curb or possibly colliding with a passenger. Here's a situation that one of our cyclists faces every working day, negotiating through the on and off ramps of a major interstate. The basic trick for the bicyclist is to determine prior to reaching the on and off ramp whether there will be a sufficient gap in motor vehicle traffic to cross the ramp safely. If the cyclist determines there is, he or she should proceed. If not, he or she needs to find an appropriate place to stop. This stopping point should provide sufficient sight distance to observe traffic and judge when a gap will occur. Bicycling on a shared use path offers its own set of challenges. Besides other cyclists, there could be joggers, hikers, dogs, even horses. You should ride predictably, straight, and at a steady speed. You should be familiar with the rules of shared use paths. Slower path traffic should stay to the right. Use your voice and use hand signals to let people know what you're doing. Passing on your left or passing on your right. If there is no room to pass safely, dismount and walk your bicycle past the congestion. Where paths intersect with roadways, there are signs or traffic signals. Obey them. Bollards are often present along these shared use paths to prevent unauthorized automobile use. Be aware of these bollards as they can present a hazard to the bicyclist. If you ride at night, be sure your bike has a bright red light in the rear and a bright white light in the front. As a rider, you should wear light colored clothing and a reflective vest. Once again, consult your bike shop professional for the latest in bicycle lighting and reflective wear. Here's a statement to take seriously. Don't leave common sense behind when you go on vacation. You're gonna share the roadway when you're on coastal highway with buses and vehicles making right turns. So we really recommend there's a lot of safe places in Ocean City that you can ride a bike that might not just be coastal highway, like the boardwalk, where you can ride from 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. most days. We recommend Northside Park, and a lot of our neighborhoods are beautiful. It's right near the bay, whether you're in Cane Woods or Montego Bay or back in Little Salisbury or back in the 28th Street area. There's a lot of nice neighborhoods where you can safely ride your bicycle. Riding a bicycle under the influence of alcohol carries all the inherent risks as driving a car under the influence. As a bicyclist, you are less protected so using poor judgment could lead to severe injury or even death. Motorists aren't the only dangers out there. Others include coming upon debris on the trail, crossing railroad tracks, riding on sand, gravel, even cobblestone, coming across a dog, encountering a drain grate incompatible with your bicycle tire. You have to keep your eyes open all the time not only for traffic, but for debris in the road, glass. Uh, sometimes there are, are potholes. All these things you have to be careful of. Park your bicycle in an area visible to passers-by. If there is no bicycle rack available, use something secure, like a parking meter or street sign. Depending on what is available and its thickness, use a U-lock, padlock and chain, or a combination lock cable. If bicycle racks are available, use them. These racks are intended to accommodate conventional, upright, single rider bicycles. They enable the frame and both wheels to be secured. The safest way to protect your bicycle is to use a combination of locks. And in some places, like this light rail stop or this office building, there may be bicycle lockers available for lease. 
Many public transportation systems in Maryland permit bicycles to be brought aboard. The Maryland Transit Administration light rail and subway systems, the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority subway trains, and MARC allow bicycles consistent with their policies. Some transit buses are equipped with racks on the front that allow transit riders to take their bicycles with them. For example, these buses, operating in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia, are equipped with bicycle racks. There are rules and regulations for bicycle transport. Be familiar with them. Remember the ABCs. Traffic laws apply to the bicyclist. Obey them. Be predictable in your actions and communicate with motorists, pedestrians, and your fellow cyclists through hand signals, eye contact, and voice. And remember, have a great ride.